President of the Mayo Clinic was on Meet the Press this morning. Take a listen to, uh, to what he had to say. Right now we're in a situation where the cannabinoid system is a pain-modifying system. There's an important bit of research that could happen there, but the federal government, of course, has not, has not supported that. So there's a lot of unknowns about this, and we have the states and the federal government at loggerheads. We'll have to see where that you goes. What, what kind of unknowns might he be talking about there, Congressman? First of all, you're going to hear some good and some horror stories. There's no question. Colorado and Washington are pioneer states. You're going to have good evidence and bad evidence coming out. I think the other 48 states and territories are going to learn from it. The truth is we have not allowed medical research on marijuana in this country. So there's a, a lack of data. And one of the key things I think we can do with this decriminalization is make sure we have better science to inform our decision making going forward. According to uh, today's Denver Post, quote, even marijuana advocates warn that there can still be serious consequences for cannabis use in Colorado. Employers can fire employees for off the job use and landlords can evict tenants. Marijuana, can, marijuana use can impact a person's government benefits or a child custody case. What, what are some of the kinks in your state system that, that still need to be worked out before other states can follow suit? The way that this needs to be looked at is like alcohol. Again, if you show up to work drunk, of course you can be fired. If you show up to work high on marijuana, of course you can be fired. Uh, once we have a regulatory system that looks at it the same way, Colorado requires, for instance, that the dispensaries are uh, a certain distance from schools, just as liquor stores are, uh, I think it'll make a lot more sense to people. Uh, there's a difference between being drunk and taking actions while you're drunk or high and simply in the privacy of your own home having a drink or, or smoking marijuana. You and I both know about the uh, disproportionate effect that, uh, that, that, that drug laws in this country have had on minorities specifically. I want to go back to something you just said about the cost, because when marijuana is as expensive as it is right now in Colorado, uh, and as expensive as it probably is going to be for a, a while at least, doesn't that still uh, reinforce the chasm that exists now between the haves and the have-nots with regards to application of drug laws? Well, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. And you also look at the growth of the prison industrial complex for these low-level victimless crimes. Um, a number of municipalities in Colorado have stopped prosecuting marijuana crimes for years, including Denver, Boulder, uh, in terms of prosecuting usage. But there's no question uh, that by legalizing and regulating marijuana, we can address some of the disparities in, in sentencing uh, that have particular impact on minority communities. All right. Congressman, did you buy any on Wednesday? No, I, I, I have not. All right. And I don't plan to. I'm not, I, don't, I don't use marijuana, and I don't, uh, I don't really drink much either. Uh, <laughs> you're offering up all kinds of information there. Congressman Jared Polis. But it Polis. should be your right to do it if you want it, my goodness. Congressman Jared Polis of Colorado, you're about the last American left who has not gone on record over the past, or now you have, over the last four or five days. Everyone's telling everybody how much they're smoking. So thank you, Congressman, for going on the record as well. Uh, here, here comes an awkward transition.